I think I only have three questions. I apologize it wasn't here. And if you mention this, um, I'm so, uh, I, I hope you don't mind my asking again. The question I have as um, mainline railroads um, began to uh, rent out or do other t to short line uh, railroads, there were certain agreements made, uh, you might say certain restrictions at times made to what's known as you well know paper barriers. What is your take, if I might ask um, you two gentlemen, about this impact for uh, on rail to rail competition in the sense that I mean, should there be some movement towards disallowing these to help this ability to bring down price? Well, obviously, if there's an agreement that only one railroad can uh, carry freight from, and that they, they have to carry that freight and other competition is not allowed, it affects uh, what cost will be involved in that freight carriage. So those paper barriers about allowing only that short line to carry that freight causes anti-competition. Our view is that sometimes paper barriers are necessary on a, temp on a temporary basis, maybe for a three or five year period, because it affects the value of the line. And uh, the railroad may be facing a situation, do, do we uh, uh, abandon the line or do we spin it off? And if, if they spin it off and, and if it's affordable to, to operate for a, a short line operator, then we think there, there may be some justification for a short period of time. Uh, but maybe the burden of proof should shift. Maybe if, if you've got one of these and it's, it's, it extends beyond, say, five years, the burden of proof should be on the carrier to, to demonstrate why it's necessary to, to have an agreement like that in perpetuity. So to some degree you're saying after a while it may be bad public policy to um, not allow shippers to utilize um, all potential routing options. And to you it's a transition type of thing. Yes, and, and, and to the extent you can create competition by, by forcing the uh, Is this something STB should look at? Uh, they yeah. already have looked at that in terms of... Have they looked at it well? Well, my conclusion is that what, the way the STB decided on this was that they decided not to establish any firmer rules got or it. guidelines than, than what exists today. So this might be... Got it. It's Let me ask a question along the same line, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, bottlenecks, through rates. Has that also had a similar impact upon the cost? So that um, somebody ships from, I don't know, Washington, D.C., Chicago, and but it goes through Pittsburgh, and so you could offload to a short line or a regional line or something there, but you do not ever see that they are permitted only to show you what the through rate is rather than showing you what the competitor might do here. There's this, would that help at all? You know what I'm talking about. There's no question that competition affects rates. I mean, there's So, but is this a problem, uh, this bottleneck through rate issue on the cost again? It's something more, we should be probably looking more at. of a problem in the energy industry than it is in agriculture per se. Uh, but yes, there, there's places where it, it, it does create issues. Ms. Hodgkins, did you have a comment on that? Uh, Does he mention energy? Yeah, yes, sir. Um, bottleneck rule has been a problem. One particular um, cooperative in Arkansas had experienced this, and a an third-party independent carrier was willing to do it, and, and they could not. Um, and it does increase the cost. There's no doubt about it. Is the, are they precluded from it, or they're self-precluded from it because they know somebody else will hit them? I mean, they could be two main lines doing this, but one main line from Pittsburgh he may have a well, some from Pittsburgh, Chicago, but he knows that if he offers a separate rate, he's going to be jammed on the other side. Is that wrong? No, I mean I think there are times when um, there may be a, a situation that that does exist and needs to be addressed. But I think there have been abuses using this. Is this concept. something STB should look at? Absolutely. Do they do it well now? Um, the rulings so far have not been in favor of the shippers. My last question is probably more philosophical, but um, the common carrier obligation under Title 49, um, what do you believe is reasonable obligation? Has the SDB interpreted that 
correctly, do you think under Title 49 um, to provide real services at a reasonable um, request at obligation? Do you know what I'm asking, sir? Uh, I mean, that's kind of a subjective phrase, isn't yes. it? We're concerned that because we've got capacity limits today and because we're not seeing an expansion of capacity in rail, that we're going to run into more and more service problems in, in dealing with this issue. I think the issue in particular, though, may, may be a sensitive one for uh, the, the, the chemical industry. Uh, Is what? The, the chemical industry in, in situations where the, the railroads would, I, I think, would like to see some relief from the common carrier obligation because of uh, what they perceive as the risk involved in hauling that type of freight. But that's really not my area of expertise. I, I guess, and I, this is something I just want, uh, I'm done for time, I'm sorry. Time is expired. I'm, 